In this lecture, we will continue with Agile Software Development and the Agile Manifesto by covering 12 principles. These are the 12 Agile Manifesto principles which we are going to cover in this lecture. Let's understand each principle one by one. The first principle is, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Let's understand this point. In an Agile project, the iterations are of small duration, and it focuses on delivering working software to the customer after each iteration. This approach helps in satisfying the customer as they can see if the software is developed as per their expectation or not. That's why our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. The second principle is welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Let's understand this point. As we know, the market is quite competitive. For example, we take the mobile market. Every month we see an innovative product or feature. And to be in the market, we as a service provider should welcome changing requirements, even if it's late. That means even if we are implementing as per the planned activity, but if we come to know that the feature is changed, we can be in a position to respond to this new change. This is the second principle. Welcome changing requirements. Even late in development, agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. The third principle is deliver working software frequently at intervals of between a few weeks to a few months, with a preference to the shorter time scale. Let's understand this point. In Agile development, the software is released in iterations. As said previously, in each iteration the focus is on providing the working software. This helps the development team to get continuous feedback on their developed product. And step by step, they build the complete software. And customers also know that the development of the product is correct. Therefore, the third principle is deliver working software frequently at intervals of between a few weeks to a few months with a preference to the shorter time scale. The fourth principle is business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. This point is very important. When we are working on a development project, we can succeed only if we work as a team. For example, suppose we want to implement an algorithm, and to implement this, if we conduct a brainstorming session, then we will get input from different people and decide which is the best approach. Therefore, in a team, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. The fifth principle is build projects around motivated individuals give them the environment and support their needs, and trust them to get the job done. Let's understand this further. After the discussion is done and the implementation approach is finalized, it should be implemented by the motivation team. We should trust the people and their capabilities as we hired them for the project. We should provide the necessary environment and tools to get the job done. Therefore, in an agile project, we should build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need, and trust them to get the job done. The sixth principle is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. As per the Agile Manifesto, face-to-face -face conversion is more efficient compared to telephonic. Though in today's distributed environment, it's difficult to achieve every time. Whenever it's possible, we should conduct face-to-face -face meetings. The seventh principle is working software is the primary measure of progress. As we saw previously, the primary focus of iteration is to deliver working software. Because by seeing the working software, customer can provide the feedback not by seeing the progress report. Therefore. Working software is the primary measure of progress as per the seventh principle. 
The eighth principle is Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Let's understand this point. Once we get the requirement, we make release planning. A single release can have multiple iterations of small duration, and in each iteration, few features will be developed. With this, we develop the software at a sustained pace. Now to support this development, each one in the team has to work at a constant pace. This is the eighth principle. Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. The ninth principle is continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. During the development, the team should continuously look for improvement in the process. They can enhance their skill by going through training or can learn a new skill. For example, they can learn a scripting language, which can help them to automate their day-to-day -day work. This is the ninth principle. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. The tenth principle is simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. This idea is central to eliminating waste. To make your progress more agile, do less. If you see that the certain process is no more required, then you can remove it. By doing this, next time you don't have to follow the process which doesn't help you in improving your product. And this is called the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. The eleventh principle is the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. Since the team takes responsibility of the products and the management, trusts the team and provides the necessary support. People discuss among themselves to make the best product by providing the best architectures, requirements, and designs. The eleventh principle is the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. The last principle is, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Let's understand this point. Since the same team has to work for the product in the future and they are responsible for developing it, they will try to reduce their effort, but automating the day-to-day -day activities. So do this while working on the iteration, they will try to find out which all steps they can automate. After finding it, they will discuss it with the team to get the best way to automate the steps. By doing this, the team becomes more efficient for the next release. This is all about the last principle. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Let's go through all the points once again to remember the points. The first principle is, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. The second principle is, welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. The third principle is, deliver working software frequently at intervals of between a few weeks to a few months with a preference to a shorter timescale. The fourth principle is business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. The fifth principle is build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need, and trust them to get the job done. The sixth principle is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. The seventh principle is working software is the primary measure of progress. The eighth principle is agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. The ninth principle is 
continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. The tenth principle is simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. The eleventh principle is the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. And the final one, the twelfth principle, is at regular intervals. The team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. There is no shortcut to remember these points. They are the agile manifesto principles, and you have to remember them for the exam and also for the interview. With this, the lecture ends, and exercise is provided in the next video.